<laughs> oh yeah, if you hear any voices, that's probably my dad and my mom talking. So, yeah. Um, sure, why not? This is not. Oh yeah, if you hear a lot of music, sorry. I tend to listen to music all the way up on that. Ah, uh, crap. The alarm scenario at the bus station was the first Left 4 Dead 2 crescendo event to feature the gauntlet mode, where players must navigate along a path to deactivate the zombie rush. This proved to be a successful approach to countering the camping strategy of finding an optimal corner and holding out. Let's go, let's go. Turn off that alarm. Hey, turn it off, turn it off. Get the Left 4 Dead 1 had a good, fictionally justifiable cast of guns, the M16 being a standard police and military weapon, for example. Hey. In Left 4 Dead 2, we had the opportunity to do something a bit less generic and use some more interesting guns, while still being aware that we had to justify their place in the game. The Desert Rifle, for example, is used to suggest that the military had rerouted guns meant for the Middle East back to deal with the domestic crisis, hence the Desert Camouflage scheme um, on the gun. He has her out, please. The ever popular AK-47, because Left 4 Dead 1 took place entirely during the night, it was fairly straightforward to light the path we wanted players to take. For campaigns that take place during the day, we had to find other tools to help the player along. The most valuable tools were visible landmarks, such as gas station signs, overpasses, the bridge, and smoke from wrecked aircraft. As with our efforts... Dang it! As with our efforts to replace the first aid kit, replacing the pain pills item was a challenge. Initial versions of Adrenaline allowed players to run faster and perform certain actions faster, such as reviving other players. But the pills already give 50 temporary points, <laughs> which is enough help for injured players to run at full speed again. She's all... So the adrenaline needed something extra. I'm really, really it's bored right now. Ooh, yeah. Affected by adrenaline, shortening the time it takes to use health kits, defibrillators, and upgrade packs. We sped up the player beyond their normal bring it, speed bro. and made them resistant to being slowed down by hitting it, bring it, bring it, bring it. Come on, come on. Although it doesn't give as much health as the pain pills, we found many interesting strategies began to emerge from the well-timed use of adrenaline. As we added more special infected characters to Left 4 Dead 2, we faced a challenge in designing unique sounds for them that players could easily recognize and distinguish from the other specials and from the common infected. In Left 4 Dead, the four male specials each had both a distinct tonal range and a character attribute to keep them unique. For instance, the boomer's vocalizations were kind of a slow, deep, bassy gap. I'm being patient. No, my God, Johnny! The patient system is a powerful tool that lets us create animations procedurally instead of offering each of them individually. Pow! There are various reasons for this. Pow! Which become clear when we consider the... I'm not even shaking out. Oh, my God. Get in the cipher. Wow. What am I saying? We want the survivor to be able to fight back. Get in the cipher. With that in mind, we decided it would be vital for the survivor to know the jockey's intent, regardless of how successful he was at acting on it. So even though you may be stuck against the table going nowhere with a jockey on your back, we want you to understand that the jockey is really trying to get you out that door at the end of the room and around the corner where your friends can't help you. To accomplish this, we implemented a system of animation layers for the survivor that would work in conjunction with the jockey. These layers get are attached the to different controls that the code interacts with called Ew. those parameters. It of the survivor's <laughs> upper body He's the still the following him! To work in sync with the jockey's motion. <laughs> He was still, still following him. Screw it. It was funny though.
Er my gird, shut up. Er my gird. Up until last Friday, too. Er my gird. Test conducted at bow. I hit it when it was in the ring. To sit behind each tester and observe them directly. For left for that too, we developed the system. Oh my god. I love trolling the take on this one. Bad thing is Tim is in the spawn here now. Webcams that captured the playtester's reaction. We recorded every playtest so we could go back and reference specific moments at will. This meant that most of the team could continue working during the playtest, which often takes several hours out of every day. This drop onto the bus shows a good example of what we call a return. If a survivor walks on top of the bus, he has a height advantage against the infected. However, the smoker can pull him down off the bus so that he has to go around and up the stairs to get back with the rest of the team. Setting fires to zombies was always a high point in Left 4 Dead, and we wanted even more ways to yeah, the fire that. in Left 4 Dead <clears> too. <throat> This dream gave rise to incendiary ammo. Initially, we dispensed incendiary ammo and later explosive ammo Dang from it. fixed ammo boxes placed through the level. These boxes can be used many times Neh. by a player. As with a smoker, the spitter has a gameplay style which necessitates hey, making her more visible to the player at a distance. Since the spitter's strategy is to hit and run, striking at the survivors from far away, we needed distinct visual markers to differentiate her in the dark spaces during Go away. the chaos of combat. To this end, we concocted a glowing drool that would illuminate her and create Sorry. a sharp contrast <laughs> to the other game colors while playing off the green death Call motif it. associated with the infection. The trail she leaves, which is visually similar to her projectile Explosions. attack, allows players a brief chance Explosions to track her everywhere. when she retreats to hide. Explosions. After we ship support for custom add-on campaigns via the VPK format, we realized that while many people can install and play these campaigns, it was difficult to discover what add-ons other players were playing. We also noticed that few players were joining games with different difficulties since it wasn't clear how many other games were available for each setting. To solve this, we implemented a browser that shows nearby lobbies. The lobby browser displays the campaign, the difficulty level, and how many lobbies have open slots available. We also display lobbies for campaigns you have not yet installed, offering the chance to download them directly. Once the lobby browser was released, we saw a sharp increase in the number of custom campaigns being played. Custom survival maps are particularly popular, with themes ranging from supermarkets to medieval castles. The laser sight weapon upgrade came from an experiment during the development Ooh, of the first Left 4 Dead, though we didn't end up shipping them at the time. You can see. It's While got to be my destiny, too, we were talking about and it's what makes you the art is selling me. Remember the visual impact of those red laser beams. The I tried to keep the them laughing, the put a smile up on their face. The more valuable benefit was accidental. That it didn't seem to the other members of the team were aiming. We also liked the choices that confronted players when they had to decide whether or not to swap out their upgraded weapon for one of a different style. The mark is telling me. After Left 4 Dead 1 shipped, we they wanted to experiment with an optional crescendo event. Game Hotline was the final and version of the experiment. I could do the it's difficult busted for survivors to navigate shoot. through without setting off a single car alarm. And if they manage it's it, no fun the experience me, of carefully sneaking through an obstacle course full of traps is itself quite rewarding. And it's what my cutie Mark is telling me. I'll do it later. Dang it. Dumb butts. You still smell sewer? Because I still smell it. 
Yay, we're at the bridge! Well, you know. We're at the bridge! Kaboom! Just managing health with the first aid kit is such oh, a large part on. of the player's decision process. I don't know. Finding a new item for the backpack slot proved to be difficult. We wanted the new Ow. item to be as valuable. Something that was I don't always care. sad for us to watch in Left 4 Dead was that players would always choose an optimized mm -hmm. path through a level once they played the map a couple times. That meant the hard work we put into other areas of the map would never be seen. So one thing we wanted to add in Left 4 Dead 2 was the ability for the AI director to change the path of the survivors through a level, so they had to take a different path each time. The cemetery contains one example of this new approach. There are four different paths that the AI director can create for the survivors. I don't know, I'm being right it now. does this by spawning in I and out what I particular to crypts room. and gates. Oh yeah, that. Go. Get inside! Thank you. And that is how you do it. 